Hi, I'm Terry Calls, and this five-minute presentation will demonstrate three types of short delay effects, a flanger, a phaser, and a chorus. I will try to, one, explain how the effects function, two, provide short demonstrations of each effect, and three, explain why I chose to use and configure them the way I did in an actual recording. Each of these effects is created by manipulating a duplicate signal to itself. Two of these effects are variations of modulated short delays that utilize and manipulate the concept of a comb filter. A comb filter adds a delayed version of a signal to itself, causing both constructive and destructive interference. The frequency response of a comb filter consists of a series of regularly spaced notches in the signal, which look like a comb when viewed through an oscilloscope. The next step to creating these effects is to modulate or move the delayed version of the signal in a cyclic motion using an LFO or a low frequency oscillator. The flanger effect is a short delayed signal that creates a comb filter. Then a low frequency oscillator puts that comb filter in motion. The flanger effect adds a nice motion to a static sound. The phaser is conceptually similar to a flanger except then rather than the filter being an evenly spaced comb filter across a frequency spectrum, a phaser can actually notch out specific frequencies, which give you more control of the track's position within the mix's frequency spectrum. The phaser effect is particularly useful on guitars and thick synth pads where you need to leave some room for the other parts. The chorus effect is designed to replicate the properties of a group of alike instruments, like singers or violinists. A chorus effect creates multiple copies of the signal and then both slightly varies the delay time as well as slightly detunes each of the delayed signals. This effect is very useful on keyboard and guitar parts. Here is a multi-track recording on a DAW comprised of a mix of synthesized, sampled, and real instruments. For this demonstration, I will use the rhythm guitar track. Let's listen to the rhythm guitar part without any modulated short delays whatsoever. Now let's listen to the guitar track as we try it with a flanger. Remember, the flanger uses an even notched comb filter that is put in motion by an LFO, creating a swirling effect. Now let's compare the guitar track with a phaser effect. Remember, the phaser is similar to a flanger in that it uses a filter put in motion by an LFO. But rather than using an even notched comb filter, a phaser uses a filter that can target specific areas of the frequency spectrum. This gives you the flexibility to notch out certain frequencies, providing space for the other tracks to come through the mix. Let's listen to the guitar track, first with no effects, and then with the phaser. And finally, let's compare the guitar track with a chorus effect. Remember, a chorus effect creates multiple copies of the signal and then slightly varies the delay time and detuning of each of the delayed signals. The effect is similar to having multiple instruments performing the same part, like a human chorus or an orchestral string section. Let's listen to the guitar track, first with no effects and then with the chorus. I ultimately chose a medium chorus effect for the rhythm guitar as it sits in the mix. The chorus gives just enough body to the track so that it can hold its own with the organ on the other side of the stereo spectrum, even though it is playing an intermittent rhythm most of the time. Let's listen to the guitar in the mix, first without an effect, and then with the chorus. So this is my presentation on modulated short delays. I hope you found it informative. Bye bye for now.